It was Princeton, and it was an offensive slugfest they're still talking about as Duke won it 36 to 27, and the Blue Devils win the opening tip. And Princeton opens up in a matchup zone. It looks like man to man, but they'll switch an awful lot. Not too much help down on the post. Joe Scott told me today he's going to try to play Duke honest. A quick foul on the Sheldon Williams miss. This is the thinnest Duke team in years, depth wise, as we look at the starting lineup, especially now with key subtractions in the front court. Reddick and Ewing, terrific on the wings. Williams averaging a double double in the middle. And junior Lee Melchione getting his first career start line. Well, Lee Melchione's hit some big shots in the last several games for Duke, really giving him a lift off the bench, so he's been aptly rewarded with a start. Princeton playing its famous backdoor game and firing up three-pointers very accurately. They played Duke very tough here last year. In fact, it was a one-point game about six or seven minutes into the second half before Duke pulled away and won by 18. And you take a look right there. Judson Wallace, the big man number 30, will go outside, but it's Will Venable right there, the guy who's probably the most versatile player on this team able to put the ball in the basket. Princeton will try to pull Sheldon Williams out from underneath the basket on defense. That way, open it up for the back door cut. Venable with the first bucket of the night. Princeton off to a 2-0 lead. They come in with an 8-4 and four record. And coming off a double overtime win over Davidson on Sunday, they've already faced three schools ranked among the top 40 in the RPI under Joe Scott, their first-year head coach. He comes back to Princeton where he started as a point guard after leading Air Force to its best season in 42 years last year, the Falcons went 22-7 and seven and went to the NCAA tournament. Well, Joe Scott, one of the great young minds in college basketball, had a chance to visit with him today. And, you know, he's realistic about his team's chances here tonight, but he understands that if they don't turn the ball over and create easy opportunities for Duke, the way they play defense and control the tempo, they have a chance. Going head-to-head -head against Mike Krzyzewski in his 25th season at Duke, 630 wins at this school. 703 in his career as Reddick, J.J. Reddick, drops in two foul shots. He has not missed a free throw at home all season. He's 24 for 24 in that category. No surprise. The foul against Daniel Ewing, the 6'3 junior out of Missouri City, Texas, as Princeton forces the pace here, 18-49 to go in the first half. Well, again, Will Venable, he's the guy who's a left-hander, can handle the ball, very versatile, ranks in the top 10 in the Ivy League and rebounding steals and assists. But he's one of those guys that if you can spread the floor on defense, make defense for Duke spread, and you can get a guy who can beat you off the bounce, he's the kind of guy that can do that. Well, Princeton needs the bounce in the season series, this uh, all-time series, to go their way for a change. They are 1-15 all time against the Duke Blue Devils. Duke coming in 9-0 after they beat Clemson here on Sunday in the ACC opener. Belchione gets his hands on it into the paint and misses the short one. Got it back, fighting underneath. That was with Judson Wallace great all over and Reddick forcing the pass out of bounds off Princeton. Judson Wallace, the 6'10 senior out of Atlanta, the top Princeton scorer. And Len, you have to come out and guard this guy because the big fella can drain the three-pointer. Well, that's the problem he presents on the offensive end. He's got the ability to shoot outside, but he's also an excellent passer, so you can't cheat on him or your man. Duke knocks it out of bounds. 4-2 Princeton in the early going. Wallace hit a huge three on Sunday in overtime to crush Davidson. He had 22 points and 14 rebounds in what was a very emotional and hard-fought victory for Princeton. And over the last eight games, he's averaged about 17 points and eight rebounds, so he's really starting to come into his own. Reddick scoops up the loose ball and in the offensive zone, J.J. Reddick, the top scorer in the ACC, but he gives it up. And the three-pointer off the mark by Daniel Ewing. Duke will keep it just inside 18 minutes to go in the half. Well, Duke is persisting in that pressure on the ball. It's something they've been successful with all year and probably throughout the Mike Krzyzewski regime. And Scott Greenman, the 5'9 point guard for Princeton, rarely turns it over. On the money with the long one, Reddick. Now with five points to put Duke in front for the first time. And now the Blue Devils will press. Wallace with the behind-the-back pass, and Princeton breaks the pressure. And Dave, that was the emphasis of the practice this morning by Princeton, inbounding the ball under the basket and on the side. Because last year, the game turned on the inability to get the ball in bounds in three possessions down the stretch. 
Matt Sargent with the miss. 5-4. Duke up by a point. Princeton, of course, will throw up a lot of three-point shots, and they've been very successful winning games that way over the years, and particularly this year. 56% of their shots this season have come beyond the three-point line. Even more than that, over the last three games, 64%. But you know that's going to worry though for Princeton because even though they've won some games with it overall they haven't been able to take advantage of the open looks that they get from three They're shooting only 33 percent which is in the bottom three of the Ivy League. If you look at all those three point baskets and all the three point attempts by Princeton. They played Syracuse very tough. They played Temple and Holy Cross very tough under Joe Scott back the edge Holy Cross by three. Lost to Temple by just two, and they were tied with Syracuse with six minutes left before falling to the Orangemen. And that's really been the story of Princeton. They've gotten oh so close in the last several years of beating some of the more recognized teams outside of the Ivy League, but they haven't been able to get over that hump. And Joe Scott believes that all it takes is one win for his guys to believe that they can do it. Venable going inside against Sheldon Williams and he wins it by knocking it off the glass. He has six points. And that was sweet. He actually was five for five from the floor, six to six from the line against Syracuse. So he saved his best for the best. And going up against one of the premier shot blockers, the landlord in all of college basketball. It's Venable again on a changeover. And he's making it look easy right now. Again, the ability to attack, attack off the bounce. Will Venable gives Princeton that dimension. Well, Duke looked pretty sloppy in that victory against Clemson until the second half. Williams loses it out of bounds, but off Princeton. And Will Venable averaging 11 a game. First team all Ivy League as a junior. The senior taking command here in the early minutes on the floor at Cameron Indoor. And he has Princeton out in front of the Blue Devils, 8-5. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. more than one victory lane don't like waiting in line at staples we'll get you in and out fast so you can get on with your day staples that was easy i want you to taste the best pizza you've ever had so i'm giving you one free celebrate papa john's 21st anniversary buy any large specialty pizza at regular menu price and get a large one-top pizza free better ingredients better pizza papa john's yeah, having a little car trouble. I'm State Farm Agent Larry Bitterman, and this is a true story. I was there on vacation, so I called the local State Farm agent. We're not really sure how the car got into the lake. Yeah, the map was a disappointment. They called a local diver, and it turns out that's me too. I think he started my claim before he even dried off. And we settled it the next day. Where would I have been without him? Sunk. Any insurance company could promise you a good price, but nobody takes care of you like State Farm. We'd love to prove it to you. Call an agent today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Action has never been so sexy. Mila Jovovich in the two-disc special edition thriller, Resident Evil Apocalypse. It's your lucky day. Available now. And Mila's back in the Ultimate Edition DVD, The Fifth Element. Wow. On DVD Tuesday. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Staples. That was easy. And in part by Papa John's Pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza. One hundred years of Duke basketball and Princeton has an eight to five lead on this Wednesday night. It's an ACC Wednesday. We welcome you to Cameron Endor, Dave O'Brien, my partner, Len Elmore. And Len, over the last several years, 10 or 15 years, rarely has Duke been as depleted up front in the uh, front court as this season with Shavlik Randolph out with mononucleosis. His replacement, Reggie Love, broke his foot just the other day. He's out for six to eight weeks. Well, with those guys out, what Duke loses is toughness, intimidation, and rebounding. And they're really forcing a lot of young guys to step into roles that they may not be ready to accept at this point in time. But I had a conversation with Johnny Dawkins right before the game. And Johnny mentioned the fact that there's going to be a couple of changes. He didn't want to really divulge what those changes were. But I suspect in using a smaller, quicker team, we might see a little bit of zone in the coming games for Duke. You might see some guys do some things that you haven't really seen from a Duke team. 
Sheldon Williams fouled by Judson Wallace moments ago, so no basket. As Duke keeps it, 15-48 to play here in the first half. And the Blue Devils down by three on their home floor. And looking sloppy, as they did throughout a lot of that victory over Clemson, eventually pulling away in the second half, mainly because J.J. Redick, as he so often does, got as hot as a firecracker. Well, J.J. Redick obviously is the guy that they're looking to get free. He's become the first option. But really, Duke is looking a little confused against this matchup. It's a zone, but they have some man principles, an awful lot of switching out there. You'll see guys cross the lane, but if you can get it inside to the big guy, all that switching goes out the window. Sheldon Williams trying to become the first Duke Blue Devil since Mike Jeminski to average a double-double an entire season. Comes in averaging 15 points and 12 rebounds, and it's Princeton getting a little sloppy here with the turnover, the second of the night. Well, Sheldon Williams leads the nation in rebounding, but it's been his offensive capability. Look at the way he uses his hips to move Wallace out of the way and create room for himself. Those are the things that I've noticed this year. He's been much more assertive down on the block. On the money from long range, Sean Dockery. And boy, has he had a huge improvement in his shooting this year from his sophomore to his junior year. Dockery up to 64% from the field. Pretty good battle between Wallace and Williams. And Wallace certainly has to be able to change positions. Front sometimes play behind because physically it's kind of a mismatch. With Sheldon Williams about 260. Real bulk up up top. And Wallace just not that strong down low. And as I mentioned earlier, Joe Scott doesn't want to give any help on Sheldon Williams because of his fear of Duke's ability to hit the three. Wallace missed. He got the shot that he wanted. He looked everybody off in the paint, but could not convert it. Ewing on the drive, and there's a foul. No, actually, he's stepping on the line, so they don't call the foul. Instead, a turnover by Duke, and Krzyzewski not happy. And Dave, going back to the Wallace move, he's got to become more accustomed to playing with power when he gets inside that paint instead of trying to finesse it. If he had dunked it, he would have made it. Venable, free for the lay-in. Will Venable, good first half indeed with 10 points. And again, the ability when a spread defensive situation occurs, the ability of Princeton to attack off the bounce, Venable is the guy they want to have the ball. Princeton so sticky as Williams has it, turns, and misfires there as Wallace hauls in the rebound. And that was a frustration shot right there. You know, Sheldon Williams, when he gets that far away from the basket, just needs to kick it back outside and reset. Wow. Williams jumps up, knocks wow. it away. Now he hits the deck, and it goes free to Wallace. So now Princeton has numbers. Logan can't find the range from the corner. Andre Logan, who came off the bench and burned Duke for 16 on this floor last year. And now Princeton comes up with another loose ball. And that was an excellent example of... Judson Wallace changing position defensively. This time he decided to try to get around front. A 10-10 tie with 13 and a half minutes to go in the first half from Cameron Indoor. Venable with 10 points. He has scored the ball for the Tigers. He's open again from beyond the arc, but he missed it all. He missed everything. And that's what... Joe Scott really worried about. He knew his team with their ball movement and their unselfishness will get the open threes. But again, this is a team that's only shooting 33% from beyond the arc. Highly unusual for a Princeton team. And Venable is one of the few Tigers who plays inside the three-point line far more than anybody else. That was only his 24th three-point attempt of the season. The foul on Noah Savage, the freshman for Princeton. So Duke has it. Reddick got a look inside. The Blue Devils take the lead 12 to 10 on the bucket. Inside 13 minutes to play in the half. Let's see if Duke is ready to go on a run. Princeton certainly can't be accused of shrinking from the big boys. Each of the last four seasons, they've played a team that eventually made it to the final four that year. Princeton in half possession here with 12.43 to go in the opening half. It's NBA Wednesday here on ESPN at 9 Eastern right after our game. Stay tuned for a great battle when Amari Sotomayor and high-scoring Phoenix takes on Yao Ming, Grayson McGrady, and the Houston Rockets. Sotomayor scoring a career-high 50 on Sunday against Portland. Boy, you talk about Amari Sotomayor. A lot of people want to change his game. They want him to put it on the floor, want him to shoot the jump shot. 
people are nuts. <laughs> they need to let him play the way he's playing. Scott Greenman, very sure-handed point guard, rarely turns it over. Andre Logan looking to have the kind of game he had here at Cameron Indoor that he had last winter, but he's been plagued by all sorts of knee injuries. Shot clock is down to two. Also a five-second call right there. Logan not able to shake J.J. Reddick. So Duke with the stingy defense on Joe Scott's team, a team that returned five seniors from the Ivy League champions last year. They went 13-1. and one. And they're expected in many circles to run the table in the Ivy League this year. The foul before the shot as Demarcus Nelson, the freshman out of California, who has been tremendous in particular, led over his last five or six ball games, but out of Sheldon High School in California. Coach K calls him an elite athlete and the best athlete on the floor for Duke. Well, Demarcus Nelson is one of those guys that we spoke of coming into this particular segment. Uh, as to accepting roles that you may not be ready to assume right now as we take a look at Demarcus Nelson's dad. But given more time, Demarcus Nelson has demonstrated he deserves that time. Over the last three games, he's got increased time. He's averaging 9.6 rebounds. And you look at that body, strong upper body, ability to put the ball on the floor, explosive. Just got to learn how to shoot from beyond the arc a little bit. Two for 15 coming into this game. That's probably the only offensive weakness he has. Yep, they love him, and Krzyzewski has compared him in terms of his body and playing style to Jason Williams. High praise indeed. Greenman chased into the corner. Almost another five-second call. Once again, Princeton handling the ball an awful lot. As Duke is just doggedly determined to pressure that ball, the ball handler as well as the, pat and the receiver. We have a timeout with 11.44 to play. We're going to throw back all night long, and when we return, Coach Vic Bubis will join us here courtside at Cameron Indoor in Durham, North Carolina. Now, when you buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas from Domino's, you get them for just $5 each. That means pepperoni guy, mushroom guy, and sausage guy can each get their own pizza for just 5 bucks. Hey. Who invited I'll pay you tomorrow guy? Domino's 555 deal is back. Buy three or more medium one topping pizzas and they're all just five bucks each. Only from Domino's. Get the door, it's Domino's 555 deal. Heartburn's back? Oh. Heartburn is back? Mm. Heartburn's back? Third day this week, so he carries these. You might try a different kind of medicine. One made for frequent heartburn, Prilosec OTC. It's the only OTC that directly shuts down lots of acid pumps. That's why one pill a day can work for 24 hours to give you zero heartburn. Sounds like smooth sailing. One pill a day. 24 hours. Zero, zero heartburn. heartburn. Successful investing. At Hero Price, it's about more than just hitting home runs. It's about a consistent, steady approach year after year. Over 70% of our funds beat their one, five, and 10-year Lipper averages. Low-cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. Well, the very first time a basketball game was played inside this building, which is now Cameron Indoor. The building was called Duke University Gymnasium, and Eddie Cameron was the head coach, and that was only 65 years ago, and Duke pulled out the victory, went on to win the Southern Conference Championship at that time back in 1944. And tonight, Duke is wearing throwback replica uniforms from that season. And we're going to be talking to important figures throughout the history of 
Duke basketball throughout tonight and we're delighted to have Vic Bubis joining us who came to Duke in 1960 as head basketball coach and in one decade became one of the great coaches in college basketball history taking Duke to three final fours four ACC titles coach Bubis thanks so much for joining us tonight thank you my pleasure a basketball was big when you coached here coach but what are your thoughts about what Duke basketball has become now well, it's it's just incredible. You know, the run that uh, Mike Krzyzewski has had here is is uh, really can't be topped by anybody that's living these days and still coaching. Uh, he came here, got the program going and and more than anyone else has been in the final four and more times and also having the uh, team to do well three different times uh, national champions. It's kind of hard to conceive of anybody that does a better job uh, off the court, on the court, and in all phases of this Duke basketball program. Coach Bubas, this is Len Elmore. Yeah, Len. You weren't too much of a slouch there yourself in the Duke decade. You had some great players, Art Heyman, Jeff Mullins, Jack Marin, Bob Berger. When you look at those players compared to players of today, do you see any differences? I know those guys are competitive, but what are the differences that you've seen? Well, I think in general, the players today are uh, quicker, uh, maybe stronger, faster, and so on. But I think the great players of years gone by, like some I had and even before then, if they were put in against the kind of competition you have now, they would perform just as well but I think there are more great athletes on the floor today than ever before coach Lewis thanks so much for joining us a real treat for us and enjoy the rest of the game tonight thanks a lot coach Vic Bubis with us 10 26 to play here in the first half duped up by four against the Princeton team that looks like it wants to hang around all night Williams pulls his way in and takes the contact he'll go to the line and again it's the ability to move the ball and get an isolation situation with Sheldon Williams down on the low block with Mike Stevens coming off the bench here to spell Judson Wallace Stevens just not quick enough his feet aren't quick enough to get around you see right there caught on the high side nice pass to the target and Sheldon Williams with the drop step to the hole very difficult to stop makes the foul shot and Duke is on a 12 2 run to open up a seven point advantage and again pressure as Princeton tries to break it. Venable has had an excellent first half. He's handling the basketball now for the Tigers into double figures, but he has been solely their offense tonight. He has scored all 10 of the Tigers' points. Logan giving it up to Noah Savage, the freshman who grew up just a couple of miles from the Princeton campus. And if you notice, throughout this game, Princeton has gotten an awful lot of open three-point looks. And the reason is, it is apparent now that Duke is deciding that rather than get caught up in the back doors by overplaying the wings too often and giving up easy baskets, they're going to force Duke, force Princeton to shoot the ball. They're only shooting 43% from the field. Take a look right here. Wallace doing a nice job of holding his position. Sheldon Williams trying to act like Humphrey Bogart down there on the block. <laughs> begging to differ 945 to go in the half but Duke is really testing Princeton's ability to shoot the ball from the outside right now that's what they don't want to give up is a back door and they haven't given up many in forcing Princeton to shoot from beyond the arc but uh, when Princeton gets down and it looks like there's going to be a run instead of panic as traditional Princeton teams do they will take even more time to try to beat you off the bounce or in back door Williams loses it, and the Tigers have possession here. Princeton playing their fifth game in ten busy days. They've done a lot of traveling. Nine of their first ten games were away from home. After tonight, they can rest a bit as Greenman is fouled by Dockery. Princeton won't play again for 19 days after tonight. We take a look right here. Just a pretty easy back cut as we're going to take a look. Again, just gets his man turning his head. And that time, a nice job. Melchione turns his head. A nice back door by Logan. Greenman having some trouble inbounding. Does get it in. Venable spots up the three. Fell to the floor, but no foul. Coming up on the nine-minute mark in the first half. Well, a win tonight for Duke. Makes them 10-0, and he'll have a 10-0 record for the fourth time in the last five seasons. 
Obviously, this is going to be one of the more challenging years that Mike Krzyzewski has had in a long, long time. Ewing slices in for two. His first bucket of the night, Daniel Ewing came in averaging 17. Second on the Duke Blue Devils behind Redick in scoring. Nineteen to twelve Duke on top. Princeton not getting going with the three point shots this evening, as we've seen so many times in the past. But they've been playing pretty good defense, getting some opportunities, gotten a few back doors. But again, if they can hit those open threes, obviously we'd have a different game. And, you know, Wallace, I watched him use his left hand in practice yesterday. If he le used his left hand on that one, he wouldn't have gotten it blocked. Williams with the block. Ewing with the miss, it's free and out of bounds. And will stay on this end for the Blue Devils, 7.57 left in the half. When we come back, we'll talk to another Blue Devil great of yore. Art Heyman will join us courtside here at Duke in Durham, North Carolina. My daddy told me never date a card player. They lie too well. Only time you dress like that is if you want the table to think you're playing with daddy's money. This is my game. Till premieres Thursday, January 13th, 9 p.m. on ESPN, presented by Toyota. Coming to DVD, they thought they knew wilderness survival. It won't bother you if you're in the fetal position. Abort the fetal position! Help me! Without a paddle, with tons of hilarious extras, including 13 additional scenes. On DVD, January 11th, rated PG-13. I want you to taste the best pizza you've ever had, so I'm giving you one free. Celebrate Papa John's 21st anniversary. Buy any large specialty pizza at regular menu price and get a large large one-top pizza free. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. You know, you have a great story, but the 86 Mets, now that's a Cinderella story. ESPN's coming to the Walt Disney World Resort. Join us in Florida for ESPN The Weekend. Visit ESPNTheWeekend.com today. Get your free ringtone now. Download Goodies by Sierra featuring PD Pablo as a ringtone. Just text G44 and send it to 40100 to download it now. Get your phone playing. How? It's super easy. Just get your cell phone and text in the number G44. Send it to phone number 40100. Just wait a little bit for the reply message and then follow the instructions to download your free ringtone. Then before you know it, you're using Goodies by Sierra featuring PD Pablo as a ringtone and it's a free ringtone sierra featuring pd pablo text g44 text g44 text g44 and send it to phone number 40100 to get goodies as your ringtone for thousands more choices go to 22zulutones.com that's www the number 22 zulutones.com free ringtone get your phone playing for major cell phone carriers all i got to do is tell a girl Art Heyman was a star at Duke playing for Vic Bubis from 1960 through 1963. Averaged 25 points per game over his career at Duke. But at 6'5", was also a prodigious rebounder who took down 11 rebounds a game in his career. Art, thanks so much for being with us. And Len Elmore tells me, guys, 6'5", is not supposed to be ripping down 11 boards a game. <laughs> Len was my hero when I was growing up in Oceanside, Long Island. When I was in grade school, he was a high school. He was my hero. <laughs> Then he became a DA and he prosecuted me. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, I used to watch Art Heyman and those Duke teams in the early 60s on television up in New York, knowing you were from New York and wondering what attracted you to a school like Duke here in the hamlet of Durham, North Carolina, coming from Long Island, New York. I was supposed to go to North Carolina. I signed my scholarship papers, but we had a little problem with Frank McGuire, and my parents made me go to Duke. They said we were going to go to college and have a bad time. <laughs> not to go to Carolina and have a good time. So I went to Duke, and thank God I, I went there and graduated. All right, it worked out pretty well for you. You had a marvelous career here, 25 points a game over the course of your career. The only Blue Devil ever to pull that off. Since your days on the court, which Duke Blue Devil most reminds you who has played on this floor of yourself? Uh, a lot of it like Gene Banks. Gene, Gene was a, a good shooter, a good scorer, not a great shooter he used to hit the board he was a great ball player it, it, it reminded me a lot like me and reddick you know reddick's a tough kid and i like reddick a lot and you're, you're leaving out the fact that you are one of the toughest customers going took no prisoners had that sweet jump shot as well so 
You know, a lot of guys from New York City were proud of you. Thank you. I'd I like to just say hello to my restaurant, Tracy J's, to Sandy, and tell the bartender, Jamie, don't steal too much from me tonight. <laughs> All, right. All right, thanks for thanks being with us this evening. You're the best. Thank you very much. Coming up on seven minutes to go in the first half, Duke has opened up a 21 to 12 lead over the Princeton Tigers of Joe Scott. And Princeton one and 15 all time against the Blue Devils in the series. Could use a little luck. It's not coming here as Venable is stripped by Dockery. What Princeton is doing right now, they've broken down to try to play a little more one on one. I mean, we're talking about a team that normally Seven out of their ten field goals are off the pass, not really off the bounce, not in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But when they get frustrated, it seems that that's where they're turning, and that's a mistake. And Williams inside wriggles free. The 6'9 junior out of Forest Park, Oklahoma, has seven in the first half. And you talk about Art Heyman and, and the greatness that he brought to Duke. Well, he used to have some battles with Larry Brown at North Carolina. Matter of fact, they had some battles when they were in high school on Long Island. Two terrific guards. Schaefer giving it up to Logan, but a charge. Belfiore getting his first start in a Duke uniform, hanging in there to accept that charge. 6 0 7 to half. And that's the kind of play that Duke is going to have to get from Lee Melchioni and when David McClure is on the floor. They're going to have to play their roles, hit the open shots, but defensively fit in. Make sure they stop their men, step in the right position, rebound, do all the little things. They're going to help support the Dan Ewings and the J.J. Reddicks and the Sheldon Williams. Melchioni, the son of the former Duke team captain, Gary Melchioni, so going back a long way in that family tradition, 25 to 12. And Duke opening up a 13-point advantage. Joe Scott just got teed up because he expected to have an offensive foul call and you know coaches recognize that those things are going to happen throughout the game what they don't like is when an official in their mind misses a call right in front of them and that's why joe scott exploded off that bench and continues to fume scott 39 years old in his first year at princeton back at his alma mater reddick pretty much automatic at the foul line he is the career free throw leader in the ACC. Although right now Joe Scott could care less. He can, wanted to file his way. You can read his lips. He's saying call it at both ends. Here's what he's complaining about. Melchioni playing with a lot of confidence. Not normally known to be. Ooh. <laughs> I'd say he's got a bit of a complaint. But more importantly, the fact that it was called in front of his bench and in his mind it wasn't even questionable is the thing that riled him the most if you're going to call it like that call it away from me so I, at least i can say well i didn't see it well that was right in front of him princeton needs a mini run of their own here as they've fallen behind after the technicals 27 to 12. and you look at the duke smaller lineup right now when they have three guards and maybe three and a half guards as Melchioni can be considered kind of a swing player but it really plays right into the hands of of their defense they can match up with everybody on Princeton's team really pressure time overplay and deny Princeton. those back doors because of their quickness Princeton takes a timeout with 515 to go in a half and right in the grill of Scott Greenman who was able to get around Patrick Johnson but unable to convert 27 to 12 the Blue Devils and while we have a second, it is time now to look back on this date in college basketball history. Don't take it. Tommy can shoot it. McGrath has to shoot it from the corner. McGrath a three. Amazing. 3.7 to go. Now Texas a chance to win it. Tucker all the way to the far line. Lays it up. Does it count? The officials are looking at each other. They're going to go to the monitor. It's got to be good. All right, they've all emerged, and they have a very tough decision to make. And score the basket. Wow. P.J. Tucker beating Providence at the buzzer in overtime, and, of course, that prompted a rule change from last season. Last year, if the ball was released after the clock hit zero, but before the light came on, the hoop counted. This year, if the ball is released after the clock hits zero, but before the light comes on, the basket does not count. The result of a very controversial 
final second. Venable with it on the wing. Mike Stevens had a knock right back in his face as he tried to push the issue in the paint. Reddick, a three-pointer. He's cold here in the first half. That was certainly the case the other day against Clemson. He had only four points in the opening 20 minutes. He wound up with 24 points in the Duke ACC opening win. Well, he's averaged about 25 in the last two games, but he's had to take an awful lot of shots to get there. And sometimes that happens when you're the marked man. Defenses are geared towards stopping you, and J.J. Reddick's had to work just a little harder. Look at Joe Scott on Scott Greenman, his 5'9 junior point guard. And I think that Joe Scott really expects Greenman to be an extension of him out there on the floor. When Joe Scott played at Princeton, he was one of those hard-nosed point guards that took no stuff and had to be a coach out there on the floor. Venable walking with it right through the paint and gives it up. That'll be turnover number nine here in the first half. And again, Scott will scowl. His team without a field goal the last five minutes. Well, earlier than those five minutes, Princeton's difficulty was that they were getting open shots and they weren't making them. Now they're not even getting shots. Duke's defense has tightened that much. Williams has it stripped, is taken right away by the tough Mike Stevens, the 6'10 senior. At well, that time, Sheldon Williams really didn't have a clue as to what move he wanted to make. Sometimes, and take nothing away from Mike Stevens, he's not the quickest guy out there. Sometimes you can fake one of those slower big men, and they don't go for the fake. They're so slow that, you know, you expect them to take it, and there he still may remain. Another open look that you can't put down. If you're Princeton, you got to wonder. Yep, Matt Sargent, a freshman. His playing time has steadily increased all season long, but misses on the long range shot. 348 to go in the half. And we have a timeout with Duke comfortably in front of the Princeton Tigers tonight, 27 to 12. The PGA Tour is back in prime time. VJ, Tiger, and the field of tour champions live from paradise. The Mercedes Championships. Coverage begins Thursday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Everyone wants it, basketball's got it. ESPN College Game Day starts January 22nd. Fueled by Mountain Dew. Just stop. There's more than one victory lane. Don't like waiting in line? At Staples, we'll get you in and out fast so you can get on with your day. Staples, that was easy. Nobody stands behind their cars like Mitsubishi, because every new Mitsubishi now comes with a 10-year powertrain warranty, five-year bumper-to-bumper warranty, and three years free scheduled maintenance. Mitsubishi, the best back cars in the world. What's that? Oh, it's a duvet cover. A what? A duvet cover. It's a decorative sham that also protects. Watch the game. The double quarter pound with cheese. Pound one. Oh! Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. What, what, what? It's a throw pillow. Reese Davis, Jay Billis, and Rick Majerus coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. The Gators bitten by injury again. We'll also check in on the unbeatens. And at least in this game, guys, there's a difference of opinion on the value of the Princeton offense. Well, it's a great offense. I'm not particularly a fan. What Duke's doing is going out and pressuring and see if they can make those backdoor passes and make threes under pressure. I love it because it personifies the, what the game's all about, the ability to pass the ball and share the ball. It's key component is passing. I'm going to make sure that they get into this discussion a little further during college game night later on tonight. We'll see you at halftime first, guys. Thank God for the shot clock. <laughs> Thank you, man. Duke really spreading around the offense tonight. Seven players have scored for the Blue Devils. This gentleman not among them. 
<laughs> he didn't even score any fashion points. Oh, no, sir. Duke just one of four schools in NCAA history to have earned at least 1,700 all-time victories. They joined Kentucky, North Carolina, and Kansas as members of the prestigious 1,700 win club. And now Ewing to go to the line. Daniel Ewing, Duke's number two scorer. And a guy who has been asked to do a lot of things on this team as its most experienced member, two-time captain. And approaching 100 victories in the Duke uniform. See the Marcus Nelson with that rebound again. Princeton starting to fall apart a little bit. Fundamentally sound. Normally fail a block off on the free throw. And, and Joe Scott's biggest nightmare, or his greatest nightmare, as we discussed today, is occurring right now. Princeton only turns it over about 13 times a game. They've already got nine turnovers, and Duke has scored 14 points off those turnovers. And that's pretty much the name of this ball game. Redick at 93% from the foul line this season. Tonight at 10 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. More college hoops coming your way. Ernest Shelton in Alabama heading to Nashville to take on Mario Moore and Vanderbilt. That is all tonight on ESPN2 at 10 o'clock Eastern time. By the way, the SEC opener for both teams. Redick a perfect six for six from the line this evening. Speaking of the Princeton offense and its utility, you know, it has great utility when you're not able to recruit the same kind of players that, say, Duke does, because now you're relying less on the athleticism and more on ball movement, and as Rick Majerus mentioned, on the purity of the game. You know, there are not a lot of times, and not a lot of guys on that Princeton offense that are going to break you down off the bounce, maybe Will Venable, but you need the personnel to be able to execute it. You need to be able to hit the open threes when teams like Duke are able to take away the back doors with the pressure. And Princeton simply has not done that tonight. They have not made a three-point bucket. They're 0 for 7. Got to hit a couple. A couple, and you would think, with the shooters on this team and the experience coming back with five seniors in particular, the foul will go against Sheldon Williams, jumping out the guard, Judson Wallace, the two men we centered on in Star Watch tonight. Some of those threes have been actual open looks. I mean, wide open looks. They haven't been able to bury them. But, you know, you got to give credit again to Sheldon Williams doing a nice job against Judson Wallace outside. And look at the second chance point. It's another weakness of Princeton coming into this game. Opponents have out rebounded them by 50 on the offensive lap. Not a single offensive rebound in the game in a little more than 17 minutes. That's pretty remarkable. Jumping out of the fence, Sean Dockery, a super quick defender. Gives it up to Ewing. No foul, although there was contact in the paint. That's kicked out of bounds off of Duke. David McClure, another freshman, getting in on it. McClure actually had started three of Duke's first nine games before Melchioni got the start tonight. And again, Duke playing without a lot of support on the front court because of the injury to Reggie Love the other day and also the mononucleosis of Shavlik Randolph. He's out indefinitely and stuck wearing some snazzy street clothes these days. Princeton's gone scoreless the last 9.32, nine and a half minutes without a field goal over the last seven. Two fifteen to play in half number one. Wallace on the hook and a nice one to break that run. And that's what Justin Wallace brings inside. He's got some versatility. He can hook with the left or the right. Although he was a little intimidated by Sheldon Williams when he was in there. Obviously Williams not in there and Wallace feeling a little more comfortable around that basket. Dockery trying to free up Reddick. Reddick loses it, and it's off him. Off his leg and out of bounds to Princeton. And this is indicative of the way Duke is playing defense. They get you to be pressured by the ball, and then they're looking for passes. Watch Sean Dockery right there just step in and shoot the gap. He's anticipating that pass to the top. Just makes it very simple. Duke has been able to do that, keep the ball from reversing all evening, and that's why Princeton's had a difficult time, except when Will Venable has tried to beat people off the bounce. Venable, 12 points all by himself out of the 16 Princeton has put up and on the dunk. 
And that causes a Mike Krzyzewski timeout here with a minute 26 left. And again, when you can spread the floor and you got a guy like Venable with the mismatch and the Melchione just not quick enough, his feet aren't quick enough to stay with Venable, you know, you got an opportunity because it's too far for the help to come. The look at the night of Will Venable so far, the Tigers' number two score, shooting 52% from the field this season. And he's been a one-man offense for them. Well, he certainly has. There he posts up J.J. Redick, and Redick gambles. And here, off the bounce in transition. And once again, the quickness of Venable gets beyond the first wave of two defenders as he gets to the bucket. He's really the only guy in this offense that can break you down off the dribble. And that's why this Princeton offense has to serve them, where you've got a lot of guys who are playing more horizontally than vertically. The Cameron Crazies here took the student body. As you pointed out, Len, you know, this is one of those instances where they're on equal footing academically with the school <laughs> they're playing tonight, so they can't get on Princeton about the academic side of things or SAT scores. So you know what they were chanting before the game to the Princeton players during the warm-up drills? You can't dunk. You can't dunk. Well, Venable moments ago proved that he can do that, and he's fouled on this drive with a minute and two seconds to play in the half. One of the few times Princeton's been able to get the ball at the top and run the back door as Daniel Ewing caught with his head turned. Nice block, though. Got a little piece of Venable, but Ewing got up on that one. Daniel Ewing with the foul to send Venable to the line. Venable last year, all Ivy League, first team as a junior. And the son of former major leaguer Max Venable, who played 12 years in the big leagues. Will Venable, not too shabby a baseball player himself, at 344 last season for the Tigers, drafted in the 15th round by the Orioles. And according to the uh, associate SID, the baseball coach thinks that Will Venable probably will be the best player on his team this season. So he may have a future in baseball as well as probably being some rich entrepreneur or something. Well, <laughs> say so. Reddick with a nice fadeaway. 45 seconds to play. Duke up 31-18 in the opening half. And Princeton has to find somebody else to score the basketball other than Will Venable if they're going to hang around tonight. Wallace, dangerous beyond the three-point line, but he hooks again. This one won't roll in for him. He battled Johnson for the rebound, and Duke will have the basketball. Well, there was that lefty hook, and as I said, Wallace, very versatile, put it on the floor with his left, went to the basket, didn't make it, but he's got to really be fearless in doing that, regardless of whether it's Johnson guarding him or Sheldon Williams. He really hasn't tested Sheldon Williams in the first half except once, and he got the shot blocked, so it seems as though he's just gone away from it. Sheldon Williams on the bench right now. He's taking notes, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Duke to get the last shot here with 15 seconds to go. First half, the Blue Devils here on the home court. Tonight taking on the Princeton Tigers from the Ivy League. Not the only foul from behind with 4.7 seconds to play in the half. And Joe Scott's got to be careful because he got upset about that one too. Another close call right in front of his bench. And really showing uh, a great deal of restraint, kind of turned towards the crowd and made his face and sat down. But that's not a happy man right there, not only because of the way his team has played for most of this first half, but obviously because he feels in some ways he's getting disrespected in front of his bench. Well, an emotional first half for the 39-year-old head coach. He's been steaming most of these first 20 minutes. And just about everybody, including his players and the officials. Valkyoni with the mate, 33-18. One last shot here for the Tigers. Luke Owings will miss it at the buzzer, and that's how the first half ends. With Duke in front with a commanding lead, despite Will Venable and 14 points. Reddick really came to life in the closing minutes of the happy as 11. So it's Duke 33 18 at halftime. Right now, we join Reese Davis, Rick Majerus, and Jay Billis in the studio for our UPS halftime report. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. Duke up by 15 at the break. All six undefeated teams remaining in college basketball in action tonight. We're going to talk about them in just a little while. Rick, back in the studio with us after the situation with USC in which you accepted the job and then decided to come back to ESPN. 
First, we're glad to have you back. Secondly, what was the overriding factor that caused you to decide to come back to ESPN? Well, I'd like to tell you it was when they wouldn't let me take Traveler, the Trojan horse, on the road with me. <laughs> it was better looking than most of my dates. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to tell you, you want to be a coach, you have an obligation to players. Your mantra is this. You want to be the most organized, energized, enthusiastic player. And that's an 18-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week commitment in season and probably a 12-hour commitment out of season. And right now I have a health issue to address. I've got to confront it. Um, I'm going to do that. I just didn't feel that I could mail it in and, and accept a lesser standard. I love Mike Garrett. Didn't like Mike Garrett or President Sample. Loved him. Those guys are really committed to the student athlete. That won't come through in their national football championship. It'll be overwhelmed by their great play. I love the institution, but I just felt, I said it would be the only job that I would have left this for at this point in time, and I meant that sincerely. And But you left the door open. Will you coach yeah, again? Yeah, will you coach again? Well, you know, some questions remain to be unanswered. I, uh, I, I, I don't know that. I, I think about it. I love coaching. Um, I have enjoyed this immensely. Um, the, the mindset is entirely different. There's a health to function as a human being, and then there's a health to function as a coach. And you guys are, have a phenomenal grasp, as do everyone here, of what this entails and the expertise. But the emotional toll here and the physical hours and the grind of trying to motivate people and to be into their heads and into their lives uh, every day, that's an exacting toll. And if I, f if I feel like I can do that, then I will probably coach again. Well, we'll give you a chance to do a little coaching here from the set and look at some of the unbeaten teams and talk about the burdens that unbeaten teams carry. Rick Majerus back with us, Jay Billis. Everybody's here. Hey, football's over. The football might not be forgotten, at least not by Jay. We'll see if BC can stay perfect at UConn at least through the first half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, Wake Up and Drive, and State Farm. It's no accident that State Farm insures more cars than anyone else. Nobody stands behind their cars like Mitsubishi because every new Mitsubishi now comes with a 10-year powertrain warranty, five-year bumper-to-bumper warranty, and three years free scheduled maintenance. Mitsubishi, the best back cars in the world. It's new, it's hot. Introducing the Ultra Strength Bengay Pain Relieving Patch. Now even stronger for deep heating relief. And it lasts up to eight hours. Try the new Ultra Strength Bengay Pain Relieving Patch. It's what's hot in pain relief. What if our loved ones who had died could reach us through the white noise of our modern electronic devices? What if they're not the only ones who can get through? White noise, rated PG-13, in theaters Friday. I want you to taste the best pizza you've ever had. So I'm giving you one free. Celebrate Papa John's 21st anniversary. Buy any large specialty pizza at regular menu price and get a large one-top pizza free. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Big Mike's gift certificate's on sale now. It's like free money. Big Mike's delivers. I'm principal of a new kind of public school. It's open up to 15 hours a day, year-round. Our teachers have more time to teach. Our students are better prepared to learn. There's just one problem. We can't get the kids to go home. Find out how your school can be more like this one. Call 1-877-LOVE-TO-LEARN. Covance Clinical Research Unit has been bringing the miracles of medicine to market for over 25 years. This fall, we're moving to our new location on Madison's east side. Volunteer for a medical research study at our new state-of-the-art facility and enjoy catered food, direct TV, a private outdoor courtyard, and internet access in every room. We offer free parking and are conveniently located on the bus routes. Volunteer today and you will be compensated for your time and participation. Check us out online or call today for more details, 1-800-732-2528. 
Welcome to the UPS Halftime Report. Duke up by 15 on Princeton, trying to go to a perfect 10-0. Oh, glad to have you with us on the UPS Halftime Report. Only six teams remaining, chasing that 1976 Indiana team that went wire to wire without a loss. One of them, Boston College, on the road against UConn. The Eagles with a, yet to have a blemish on their resume going into Hartford Civic Center. Marcus Williams to Rudy Gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. UConn up 10-8. to eight. Boston College up by two. Antonio Kellogg drives inside, and Sean Williams. Ball gets passed up court, and Maine Watson ends up putting it in the hoop. Here's Williams again, getting blocked by Sean Williams. Well, I think Boston College has got a really solid team. Al Skinner's got Craig Smith inside. He's got solid guards. Lewis Hennett running the point. And Jared Dudley, one of the best garbage men, and I mean that as a compliment in the country. And in a 30-28 game, the Huskies get that running game going again. And the freshman, Gay knocking it down there. And UConn now has a 37-30 lead, trying to hand BC its first loss. West Virginia also undefeated. They're on the road about halfway through the first half. They're down by two against Villanova. That game's going on on ESPN Classic, by the way, with the old-school graphics. Jim Simpson, Roy Massimino on the call there. Nova has a two-point lead at the break. Eastern Time. For more information, log on to ESPN. 11 and 0. Pointed out they've scheduled for success, but going to Kansas not necessarily conducive to that type of success. Right now, being undefeated is a badge of honor, but it gets a little heavier as you go along. Yeah, and uh, none of these teams is going to remain undefeated throughout the season. I think the only team that's got a snowball's chance of being undefeated at the end of the year is Illinois, and I don't think that's going to happen either because they've still got to go on the road to Wisconsin, on the road to Iowa, and on the road to Michigan State. I think the problem when you're undefeated and you're, you're thinking about it is trying to stay undefeated and playing not to lose. It's an attitude shift. Instead of playing to win, you're trying to hang on to something. And you've got to be really careful about that attitude. That's where a loss sometimes can be good. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big believer in a loss because there's a teachable moment in sports and there's a place where you can kind of reconnect and you can identify your problems and you can come together as a team. And, and I think sometimes that, that it, you know, winning all the time masks those problems. You don't want to lose too much, though. Yeah, but, you, you know, when you can learn while winning, that's the best thing, when you can evaluate yourself honestly. But for kids, that's hard to do. They need to be sharpened up sometimes by a loss. And as we mentioned, some of the lesser programs, too, need to learn how to win. They've been able to do that at some places. We'll see if they can carry it over as conference play starts to heat up and intensify, including in the Big East, where Pittsburgh was down bigger early to Georgetown. That is now a five-point game at halftime. St. John's and Syracuse, a two-point lead for the Johnnies. They're still in the first half of that game at Madison Square Garden. All coming up in just about a minute or so over on ESPN2. Some other action from the Big East, Notre Dame and Seton Hall. Chris Thomas, and out point guard for the Fighting Irish, will try to lead Bray's team against the Hall. Plenty of basketball on the Family of Networks tonight. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? When it comes to shipping, talk is cheap. Mistakes aren't. Brown's got the horsepower. They've got the planes, the technology. Truth is, I don't care how they do it. I just care that my packages get there on time. Hey, all I ask for is perfection. Other than that, I'm pretty easy. UPS delivers more packages on time than anyone. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Nobody stands behind their cars like Mitsubishi because every new Mitsubishi now comes with a 10-year powertrain warranty, five-year bumper-to-bumper warranty, and three years free scheduled maintenance. Mitsubishi, the best back cars in the world. One name is breaking records. Mm. One name is bringing families together. Oops. One name says it all. Fokker. 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 Now it's up to 50 Fokkers. What could be better? Meet the Fokkers. Rated PG-13. Now playing in theaters everywhere. Now, when you buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas from Domino's, you get them for just $5 each. That means pepperoni guy, mushroom guy, and sausage guy. 
can each get their own pizza for just five bucks. Hey, who invited I'll Pay You Tomorrow guy? Domino's 555 deal is back. Buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas and they're all just five bucks each. Only from Domino's. Get the door, it's Domino's 555 deal. She had her license for 45 minutes. <laughs> And two accidents in less than 10 seconds. <laughs> two. I'm State Farm Agent Kevin Weber, and this is a true story. Yeah, I was scared. I didn't want to call my parents. I called her parents. He really treated her like she was his own daughter. I handled her claim and gave her a few pointers. A lot of pointers. <laughs> a lot of pointers. <laughs> Any insurance company can promise you a good price, but nobody takes care of you like State Farm. We'd love to prove it to you. Call an agent today like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. UPS Halftime Report. Might not be your fault, it's your responsibility. 2 and 14, Dennis Erickson gets the axe as head coach of the 49ers and perhaps not directly related, but amidst the turmoil at Ohio State, Andy Geiger, the athletic director, announces that he will retire. On the court news, Matt Walsh is going to miss four to six weeks for Florida with torn ligaments in his left ankle. The Gators have Arkansas coming in on Saturday. Not good news, not good time. Well, Billy Donovan's young kids are going to have to grow up fast because Walsh, one of the three experienced players he had to rely upon. Matt Walsh, a sharp shooter, so too is J.J. Redick of Duke. 11 points in the first half. Look at the way he just freezes guys with those moves and then goes over the top and knocks down the shot. Devils by 15. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? When my hunger's big, there's nothing like a double QPC. I'm loving it. Thank you. Gracias. Do you have a secret? I see dead people. There is a soul survivor, and he is miraculously unharmed. There's a monster outside my room. On January 11th, from the creator of The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, and Signs, comes the number one worldwide thriller. Don't let them in. M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. Own it on DVD January 11th. Come to Lowe's, where it's easy to get organized. At Lowe's, you'll see how to turn every nook and cranny into a place to store things. Because only Lowe's carries closet-made completions, an innovative storage system that you can customize to fit your every need. Lowe's also has more brand-name storage solutions than anyone else in the country. And Lowe's has low prices every day, guaranteed. That's our promise. Lowe's, improving home improvement. Get a $35 gift card free when you spend $300 or more on closet-made shelf track or completions. Big Mike's gift certificates on sale now. It's like free money. Big Mike's delivers. I'm principal of a new kind of public school. It's open up to 15 hours a day, year round. Our teachers have more time to teach. Our students are better prepared to learn. There's just one problem. We can't get the kids to go home. Find out how your school can be more like this one. Call 1-877-LOVE-TO-LEARN. She had a music report due this morning, but our computer is so slow. Quick, how do you get your internet service? Through the dish. She suffered a total photonic shutdown. You mean? She fell asleep waiting for the connection. But thanks to Charter, we'll have that report finished in no time. Do you know anything about the blues? Tired of waiting? Get Charter high-speed internet up to 100 times faster than dial-up. The dish is a disease. We're the cure. Call 1-888-GET-CHARTER. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Net Zero High Speed Access. Only $14.95. Call 877 Net Zero or get it at netzero.com. And McDonald's.
Duke celebrating 100 years of Blue Devils basketball, and they're out in front by a healthy margin over Princeton. The number five Blue Devils, 33-18, as we get set for half number two. Dave O'Brien, Len Elmore with you at Cameron Indoor. 65 years ago tomorrow, Duke defeated Princeton, the first game ever played in this building. That went well for Duke. They won it their very first game here, and they're enjoying the way it's going tonight. Well, they certainly are, and again, it's been their offensive rebounding has really gotten the job done. Nine offensive rebounds for Duke leading to uh, 12 points. But in the beginning, Will Venable demonstrates again that you can take Duke's defense off the bounce. But J.J. Redick has stepped up, really getting some open looks from beyond the arc, driving to the basket when they start playing that three-point shot. And it's really come down to a situation where Princeton has to be able to start making some threes as well as hit the offensive glass. They got no offensive rebounds in the first half. Well, on the drive, Matt Sargent, the freshman, missed a layup. So nothing falling as the trend carries over from the first half to the second. But you mentioned Princeton going 0 for 9 from three-point distance in the first half. On the drive, Daniel Ewing with the bucket. He has four points, and Duke out in front, 35-18. Ewing now at four along with three assists. The Ewing and Reddick. Have three times each played 40 minutes in a game this season, and with the depletions, particularly along the front court for Duke this year, they might have to get used to that. At 40 minutes a pop, Justin Wallace, that hook not falling for him. Well, what Sheldon Williams is doing, he's holding his ground, not allowing Wallace to lean in, which gives you better leverage for making that hook. So he's kind of shooting a fadeaway hook, which is not going to get it. Wallace, Princeton's number one scorer. Averaging almost 15 points a game. He had just two in the first half. As we give you a look at the first half stats, Duke out rebounding Princeton 22 to 9. And look at the three points and the difference. 0 for 9, actually, Princeton, as they missed one in the closing seconds of the first half. We talk about being unusual again. Princeton, normally a pretty good three point shooting team over the years, but they're among the bottom three in the Ivy League, shooting about 33% coming into this game. And obviously 0 for 8 has diminished that percentage. Well, there's Venable again, and the only man doing any scoring for the Princeton Tigers, 16 of their 20 points. Well, we told you he saved his best for the best. We had a perfect night against Syracuse, 5 of 5, 6 of 6 from the free throw line earlier this season. Wallace with the foul there, but a nifty give to Venable moments ago. And again, just a good receive, overplay at the top, and really just losing his man with Sean Docker. I take it back, Daniel Ewing. I know they'll probably talk about me if I get it wrong when they watch the tape. Oh, don't you know it. Princeton with the ball. Hey, the night got off to a very classy start when Grammy award-winning musician Branford Marcellus got the night going with a terrific rendition of the national anthem. Eric Cameron Endor. And Joe Scott is really going nuts on the sideline, and he's about to get another tech, but I don't blame him. The officials are letting so much go on both ends that what you wind up doing is getting reckless defensive play. And here, Will Venable really risked injury. Here's the back door once again beating Daniel Ewing. And there's got to be some call right there. Obviously, the officials say no call, but the contact made with Reddick and also from behind right there, that was a good block by Daniel Ewing. But the contact with Reddick, you know, you've got to be able to dissuade guys from making reckless defensive plays. And that includes stepping under guys when they've taken off. And J.J. Reddick didn't mean it. That's part of the defensive play to get underneath him. But Joe Scott doesn't want to see his guys get hurt. And it's happened on the other end as well. Sheldon Williams went up, powered up for the basket. He got hacked across the arm. No call. Venable with 16 points. He's the man who just went down hard on his back, but he stays in the game. A long shot off the mark by Wallace, but kept alive by Venable. Justin Wallace was a very, very good three-point shooter, despite the fact he's 6'10". Unable to get it to go. In fact, Princeton has yet to hit a three-point shot all night. And they've gotten some open looks. We mentioned in the first half, some wide open looks. Just not able to put it down. Wallace working on Williams. Got it to roll in. And there's the left-handed hook. And that time, he got Sheldon Williams to backpedal so he could lean in, maintain his balance, and shoot that lefty pretty nicely. But like Duke in the ACC, despite some changes, much is expected of Princeton this season. They were voted the preseason choice to win the league this year. Dockery shot right on the money. 
And I like that shot by Sean Dockery. He could have settled for a three, but instead put it on the floor and made up the space to make it an easier mid-range shot. Princeton with five seniors back a season ago. They ranked third in scoring defense and in the top 15 in shooting percentage. Although tonight not living up to those shooting expectations at all. Down 37 to 22, nearly stolen away. Back out to Wallace. Shot clock is at 12 for the Tigers. Venable hits the deck again, and he's fouled. And you know, Dave, you can see the difference in how Venable plays and the rest of his teammates. Against this Duke pressure, a lot of guys are kind of helter-skelter. They're really in a hurry to get rid of it and do something. When Venable receives it, he slows the game down. He goes into triple threat, surveys the floor, and makes his move. And that's what a good offensive player will do. Venable with it on nice. the backdoor cut. Right back in the face of Matt Sargent. Greenman will shoot it. A bad shot, clanging off the glass, and Reddick comes away with it. Well, that's what happens when the landlord comes to collect the rent. Sheldon Williams didn't really leave his post down low, and, you know, when you go back door and you got to reckon with a guy like that, you'd rather shoot the three. <laughs> the foul will go against Noah Savage, the freshman from Princeton, New Jersey. And we have 16.01 to play here in the second half. Joe Scott has been teed up once by the officiating crew of Carl Hess and company. And trying to maintain his temper here in the second half. Williams free, but no basket. The foul came before that. As he is battling down low real hard. 15-51 to go. And we have a timeout. The 100 years of Duke basketball celebration continues. In a moment, we'll be talking with Jeff Mullins. That's when we return to Cameron Indoor in just a moment. One victory lane. Don't like waiting in line? At Staples, we'll get you in and out fast so you can get on with your day. Staples, that was easy. I want you to taste the best pizza you've ever had, so I'm giving you one free. Celebrate Papa John's 21st anniversary. Buy any large specialty pizza at regular menu price and get a large one-top pizza free. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. In Taipei, we monitor the fire alarm system in the world's tallest building. In Barcelona, our surgical instruments initiate the healing. In San Bernardino, wildfires are extinguished with our foam. At Tyco, we make thousands of products that aren't simply important. They're vital. Tyco, a vital part of your world. I want you to taste the best pizza you've ever had, so I'm giving you one free. Celebrate Papa John's 21st anniversary. Buy any large specialty pizza at regular menu price and get a large one-top pizza free. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. This is Jeff. He has a push-free vacuum, automatic car seats, a sprinkler system that's also automatic, rain-sensing windshield wipers. When he comes home, the lights go on. And when he goes to bed, the lights go off. Check it out, check it. It's no wonder Jeff has a Fidelity Freedom Fund. He can set it and forget it, knowing that he has a diversified mix of stocks and bonds. Automatically, of course. For our Simple Start IRA, call 1-800-FIDELITY. Smart move. Duke with a second half lead over Princeton here. And we're delighted to be joined by Jeff Mullins, who has his number up in the rafters here at Cameron Indoor. Jeff came from the land of the great shooter, Lexington, Kentucky, in the early 60s, and would star here in Durham, averaging about 22 points per game and hitting over 51% of his shots in three years at Duke. And Jeff, hardly anybody does that anymore. The day of the 50% shooter seems like the Stone Age now, doesn't it? You know what? Uh, not only that day, but I never got to shoot a three-pointer, which I would have liked to do. But, uh, yeah, field goal percentage was much more important back then, I think. 
And Jeff, you guys, your teams were a part of that Duke decade, if you will. In 63, you go to the semis. 64, you go to the finals of the NCAA tournament. And looking back on that, the memories don't fade, do they? No, they don't. And every time I come back to Cameron Indoor Stadium, it, it's always a thrill and to, to come back here. And, you know, when I look around the crowd, I see the same people, a lot of the same people that were sitting in these seats uh, 40 years ago. And that's what makes Duke basketball very special. Jeff, I think that Duke University does as good a job as anybody as far as recognizing the great history of the program here. When you stepped out in that line at halftime today, you got a huge round of applause. And let's face it, a lot of these students have had no idea who you were before they came to campus, started reading about you, saw your number in the rafters. Obviously, they do their homework, and they're very fond of you. You know, Dave, I think that really is a part of the Duke tradition of basketball. Uh, and the tradition of Cameron Indoor Stadium. And I, there's one guy I got to give a lot of credit to. Mike Krzyzewski has done an unbelievable job of, of merging the generations of Duke basketball. Every time there's a Final Four, he has a hospitality room for former players. And there's always events to bring former players back. And I, for one, really appreciate that and, and like doing that. Well, you are a 64 Olympian. And obviously one of the more successful Olympic teams America's had, very dominant. You know, what do you think about the pros being part of the Olympics today? Well, you know, Lynn, uh, well, you and I have talked about this. I, I think the key thing, whether it's the pros or the amateurs, it was one of my dreams to play in the Olympics. And we just need to take guys over there that want to be there. And I, I think after a hard pro season, some of the guys just don't have their heart in it. And you know you can't win competitive sports if your heart's not in it jeff you did a lot of winning here at duke thanks so much for joining us it's been a pleasure tonight i enjoyed being with you dave and Lynn. thank you jeff mullins do great his number is in the rafters to prove it and a little bit of a run here for princeton moments ago the backdoor cut as judson wallace got open to lay it in to close it to 38 to 27. And now Princeton with the ball in the red hot Venable. Right around Reddick, but he missed the short one. He certainly got the look at the basket that he wanted because he left JJ Reddick back in his shoes. And just going back to Jeff Mullen, not only was he a great college player, but he turned out to be a pretty darn good NBA player as well. Stolen away by Luke Owings of Princeton. And a foul on the play with 13.50 to go in the game. I think they're calling goaltending as well. You take a look here. Venable off the bounce on the drive. Ball hits the backboard and then Ewing touches it. And obviously that's goaltending. Now still conferring on this. At the moment, 38-27. The score has not changed. And let's see how they rule on this. Right now, Venable setting up at the line. Melchioni looking to check in here for Mike Krzyzewski. Let's see if we can pick this up on the microphone. And after the play, five gets the kid from your team right in the head and knocks it to the play. So we have a foul after the play. All right, so the basket will count. As Venable is at the line looking to shoot here. With Princeton closing the gap and starting to play Princeton-style basketball, and we have a timeout. Duke taking the timeout here with 13.50 to go in the contest. Yeah, Mike Krzyzewski knows he needs to talk about it, get his team refocused. He's pointing to the scoreboard and saying, fellas, you know, take a look now. They've closed this lead. You know, they've got to get back to the effort defensively. Inside 10 points now for Princeton, and it's Krzyzewski's turn to get hot. I've been getting messages from the dead. Warnings. Threats. This Friday. John, my love. Life phenomenon is the most disturbing movie in years. It is one thing. Only 
four with 618 remaining in the opening period. Just five bucks. Hey, who invited I'll pay you tomorrow guy? Domino's 555 deal is back. Buy three or more medium one topping pizzas and they're all just five bucks each. Only from Domino's. Get the door. It's Domino's 555 deal. What's the fastest way to get big bucks? Instant money refund anticipation loan from H&R Block. Walk in with your taxes. Walk out with a loan check. Do it today at H&R Block. Quiet, please. Habitat for Humanity. Proudly supported by the PGA Tour and its tournaments. Over 2,000 charities, a million stories, one goal. It's new. It's hot. Introducing the Ultra Strength Bengay Pain Relieving Patch. Now even stronger for deep heating relief. And it lasts up to eight hours. Try the new Ultra Strength Bengay Pain Relieving Patch. It's what's hot in pain relief. At the 9.35 mark of the first half, Georgetown had a 19-point lead on Pittsburgh, but the Panthers are at home where they're tough, and Yuri Demetrius knocks down the three, and the Panthers are on top by a deuce now about halfway through the second. Moments ago, the goaltending call against Duke, so count the basket and the foul after the goaltending call allows Princeton to keep the basketball here, 38-29 to Duke, and Princeton has the momentum in this thing. Well, they have. picking up his third foul line. And they have, and they've gotten just, just Judson Wallace more active down low. And you saw right there with the right-hand hook. He's gaining more and more confidence playing against Sheldon Lee. Well, Princeton was down 15 at halftime, and it's 38-31 now. And for the first time tonight, the Blue Devils really need their crowd. The freshman knocks it down. Demarcus Nelson now with five points. Huge basket for Duke. And again, Demarcus Nelson comes into this game 2 of 15 from beyond the arc. And Will Venable decided he was going to test him. Princeton picking up the pace, shooting the ball in the second half. Duke just three out of five, not many opportunities. And the Blue Devils have also turned it over four times in the second half. Running shot one-handed off the mark by Max Sargent, but Wallace keeps it alive. No foul, blocked out of his hands by Sheldon Williams. Stepping up, Sean Dockery decides not to fire the three. Good decision as well. Here's an opportunity to set up your half-court offense. This is what you call the ability to put teams away. You start building leads by executing. Bennett gives it up, and Aaron pass. Venable pulls up. Got it. He has 20 points tonight for Princeton. Will Venable. And the Princeton defense, a team that's allowed only 54 points per game this season, is really starting to step up a little bit. Nelson threaded his way inside and lost it. Venable chases down this one, working on Reddick again. Threw it away into a sea of white shirts in the paint. Again, uncharacteristic, out of control. Will Venable that time got up in the air, had no place to go with it. Went in doubt, and you're that close to the basket, get it up on the glass. Reddick double team. He lost it. Now Duke screaming for a foul and no whistle. As I mentioned, a lot of contact, both coaches. The worst thing that could happen is that the officials start to take the night off. I don't think they're doing that. But there are times when they're not paying enough attention to the contact. When we come back, we're going to be talking to Lefty Brazil, an old buddy of our own Len Elmore's courtside here at Cameron Indoor when we return. Call you from the car. Line the highs now. Belting is a go. I was looking. 
Style Nora. Technology to go. Chevy Trailblazer. An American Revolution. Hey! Notre Dame, right? Duh. ESPN's coming to the Walt Disney World Resort. Join us in Florida for ESPN The Weekend. Visit ESPNTheWeekend.com today. The PGA Tour is back in prime time. VJ, Tiger, and the field of tour champions. Live from paradise, the Mercedes Championships. Coverage begins Thursday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And it is Charter Guys talking football. The special teams coach practice those exact type of situations. Yeah. I fought for my life every yeah. year. And that last preseason game meant a lot to me. Would it's you let the jockey talk? All right. <laughs> It's Charter, Guys Talking Football, with Derek Engler, Tarek Sala, Mike Heller, Fridays from 5 to 7 on ESPN Radio 1070. Charter, Guys Talking Football on a Friday night. A Madison Sports Center is next. This is ESPN Radio. He's at the store. Got the coupon. He sees 11% savings on everything at Menards. Wow, look at that spin move as he gets his cart. He's heading for 11% savings on power tools, faucets, lumber, paint, and more. This guy's on fire. Look at him go. There's no stopping him. He's at the goal with 11% savings on everything at Menards. It's an ACC Wednesday presented by Staples inside Cameron Indoor. The number five Blue Devils with a 41-33 lead against a very pesky Princeton team. Real happy to be joined by the great lefty Drizel and, of course, a grand, grand friend of our man, Len Elmore's. But, Coach, you played your college ball at Duke your last year, 1954, here. Right. But as a coach, you said you hated playing teams like Princeton. How come? Well, because they hold a ball. We, hey, Lenny, we used to score 33 points in the first 10 minutes of the game, right? Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> say nobody played defense, but we know that's yeah. we know that's not true. I know. We, we, you know, we shot the ball, and... Uh, then I shoot the ball and throw 50 pass and get a back to a cut and uh, you know they're tough to put away. I thought Duke had them put away at the half and now they've come back and they haven't made any threes. It, usually they're a pretty good three point shooting team. Well, that's spoken like a, a true major college coach, but <laughs> most of your, a lot of your career was spent coaching so-called mid majors like Davidson, James Madison, and Georgia State. And you know, you and I had this discussion before about games like these. Certainly. The Division I teams like to play these types of teams, but they only play them at home because they're good preparation for the NCAA tournament, particularly in the early rounds. I think you beg to differ. Yeah, I do differ. Uh, in the first place, what is the difference between a mid-major and a major? I mean, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a label. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just something that you sports writers put on. You know, like, we give just as many scholarships at Duke at, at Georgia State, and, you know, and Princeton doesn't give any scholarships. So... You know, I don't. I, I disagree with that mid-major stuff. You know, but I. I don't know if, if uh, Duke, Duke will go back and play Princeton next year at Princeton. I kind of doubt it. But if they do, it'll be a tough game for them. It's tough to win on the road. I don't care what league you're in. Man, tough to win here certainly at, at Camp Yeah, this yeah, is it's a tough place to play. But we scored 100 in here one year. But like I say, I don't like these low-scoring games. I like to run and shoot. <laughs> you know, that's the only way Lenny could score was getting rebound. <laughs> hey, after Lucas shot the ball, he would get a rebound. That's right, and I, and I made a living on the next level because of it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> lefty, a delight. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight at Cameron. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Great lefty, Grizel. 41 years in coaching. 10.45 to go here in the second half. Duke with a 44 to 35 lead against Princeton and the Blue Devils going with some throwback replica jerseys from 1940. They look fairly close. Well, it's hard to tell with Duke. Their uniforms have changed so little over the years. Slicing his way in for two point shot. Dockery, the 6'2 junior out of Chicago. Well, I'll tell you what, in, in the category of, of shameless coach promotion, you know, I think it's a shame that Lefty Giselle is not in the Hall of Fame. Indeed. Forty and a half seasons coaching Division I, never been accused of violating NCAA rules. 786 victories, fourth among coaches who led Division I teams only. Only Dean Smith, Adolph Rupp, and Bobby Knight have more wins. And he's the only coach in NCAA history to be named Coach of the Year in four different conferences, as well as win 100 games at four different universities. And one of the most colorful figures in the game. 
ACC Wednesday presented by Staples, Princeton against Duke. Duke celebrating 100 years of college basketball. Picked up by DeMarcus Nelson, airborne for two. Duke back to the effort now, overplaying the wings. And they're not allowing Judson Wallace to receive the ball at the high post. That's been giving him some problems. The freshman Nelson showing off the skills that Mike Krzyzewski says make him the best athlete on this Duke team. He actually committed to Duke. Very unusual after his sophomore year of high school in California. And what a high school star he was. He scored over 3,400 points, the most in California prep history. Off the back iron, Reddick at 11 in the first half. He's been cold in the second half. A whistle off the ball, a timeout. I think that's a pretty good timeout by Joe Scott. Again, his team starting to lose its rhythm. The thing that got them back into this ball game, hitting the ball at the top, being able to go back door. But again, overplaying. Once again, excellent anticipation by Demarcus Nelson. And it's that first pass on the wing that you got to be wary of because Duke is pressuring the heck out of it. Nelson, a parade All-American, Mr. California basketball as well. Hey, coming up after our game tonight, ESPN has an offensive-defensive battle as the Phoenix Suns face the Houston Rockets. It's NBA Wednesday right here on ESPN. Well, I don't know where the defense comes in, but you take a look at those two guys, and Salamar and McGrady, two of the most potent offensive weapons in NBA basketball. And don't forget Big Yao. Well, there's your defense. And your shot blocker intimidation. You certainly have seen that plenty tonight with Sheldon Williams of the Duke Blue Devils. The landlord is creeping closer to 200 career blocks. And look at him outside. He's down low playing Wallace, putting more pressure on him at the top, not allowing him to get open looks for those backdoor passes. Vanderbilt giving off. The three-pointer off the iron by Scott Greenman. He's usually reliable out there, and that's it tonight. Spotting up Dockery. In and out. Rebound kept alive by Nelson, and they blocked from behind by Judson Wallace in all ball. Right, and Scott Greenman's inability to hit the three is just illustrative of the problems that Princeton's had. As you mentioned, he hits about seven a game, one of the more reliable three-point shooters, and he can't buy one, and they're wide open. 0 for 3 on the top of the wide open. There's Wallace for two points. He's had a much better second half than he did in the first half when he was held to two points. And he's been playing with more confidence. I'm sure Joe Scott lit into him about backing down from Sheldon Williams, although Sheldon Williams, as I mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, playing the best basketball of any big man in America today. Wallace knocks it out of bounds, going body to body with Sheldon Williams. The 6'9 force in the middle for Duke. Although Mike Krzyzewski is thin in the front court this year because of the losses of Chadwick Randolph and then the man backing him up, Reggie Love, the former wide receiver at Duke, who finally got his first career start the other day on Sunday against Clemson. And what did he do in the first half? He broke a bone in his foot. And a heartbreaking thing for Love, who had been in the Green Bay Packers preseason camp. He was cut, came back yet another year of eligibility at Duke, decided to continue to play basketball for Coach K, and breaks a bone in his foot. He's out six to eight weeks. 7.51 to play here in the second half. Duke in front, 48-37 over Princeton. By now, it's time for us to go to the studios and Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Dave, one of the six unbeaten teams remaining in action. Boston College against UConn on the road in Hartford. Seemed to be a snake pit. Maybe not so much for Jared Dudley, who knocks down the three. And Boston College has a seven-point lead. As you guys mentioned, a little NBA action coming your way shortly. Suns and Rockets. See Steve Nash entering the house right now. the second half against Georgetown that was not I mean you won that was unusual because nobody expected it but that was not an unusual half of basketball for Villanova you didn't shoot that many times did you no we didn't we only shot 10 you know how many we made nine nine out of ten I'm just looking at what West Virginia has done let's see they've had a total of 29 shots here and made only six in the first half yes yes it's Again, it's it's unfortunate. I don't know how you contribute that to whether you contribute to Villanova's defense or uh, 
you know, West Virginia's lack of getting into the lane to get better shots. Now you're talking about Ed Pinckney, and I know that it's been old home week for Roddy Massimino here, and there are others here tonight. Uh, Jay White, the coach of Villanova, Ed Pinckney, and others. IQ you? Yes, there there are plenty. There's Harold Jensen. Oh, here's Edward again, who loved to play against Patrick. There's Whitey Rigsby, who's a, in a development, athletic development program, and also, also Steve Pannone, John Pannone's brother, and a young man I'm very proud of is Howell Jensen, who is president of Villanova's Alumni Association. So a lot of our guys have done very, very well. I keep in touch with almost all of them. All of them will be here for uh, the 15th when we're celebrating uh, the national championship win against Georgetown on January 15th. And uh, as we take a look around here, in just one moment, if I may, in the truck, what would you, if you were John Beeline, tell your club when they're down by 20 points? Well, John is a great coach. He has done a marvelous job of keeping the kids together. He wants people that play hard, work hard, and enjoy each other. I think John will just tell the players, hey, let's just go try to play as hard. He's inside Cameron indoor. Len Elmore, Dave O'Brien with him. <laughs> oh. Took a long time. That's about as much time as it takes to get made up for a date. Yeah, Lion. Duke winning 31 games last year, winning the ACC, advancing to another Final Four. All in all, pretty typical Blue Devil season. Since 1997-98, Duke has dominated college basketball so thoroughly it is dizzy. Three Final Fours. Five consecutive ACC titles, a run of five consecutive ACC tournament titles, seven NBA lottery picks, five consensus first team All Americans. And you talk about how they've been able to do it. Obviously, it starts with talent. Who wouldn't want to play for Mike Krzyzewski? But this is what knocks me out 54 of the 58 four year players since 86 have played in a Final Four and at least one national championship game. You talk about walking into a young man's house <laughs> yeah. and selling them on that. What a recruiting tool. Hey, you're going to play in a Final Four. The percentages are certainly with you if you come to Duke. 7.45 on the clock. Princeton made a run. Now they need another, trailing 50 to 37. And in that timeout, I'm pretty sure Joe Scott told his guys, look, we need to slow it down even more. Slow the game down. Be able to work our stuff. Not get helter skelter. Not get flustered by the pressure. Go back to 1986. You get three national championships for the Blue Devils, ten Final Fours, and 15 appearances in the Sweet 16. A remarkable run of success. Now Duke in its 100th year of college basketball, truly among the handful of. Genuinely elite team in the college team. Stevens backing in. His hook shot rolls off, and it's Williams with the rebound for the Blue Devils. But, you know, you make fun of me for liking these big men, but I like that old time stuff right there. That's old school, the hook shot. One of the most difficult shots to defend, and one of the easier shots to make. Well, that was a difficult shot to make underneath the rim, and Dockery could not get it to go. He gave up the three and decided to drive in the right decision, but he couldn't get the basket. You know, these days, a lot of guys like to take that jump hook, and a lot of it is because of the defenses that are down low digging, and when you start swinging that hook, a lot of times people can get their hands on it. But if you position yourself correctly, you're going to make a bunch of them. Reddick out in front. Oh, Greenman fell down. And a foul on the play. Reddick will go to the line to try and complete a three-point effort here. Unfortunately for the Tigers, Scott Greenman just thought oh, fell down on his rear end, end trying to defend a charging Reddick. Well, you got the, the offensive player bearing down, and you look at him backpedaling. He got his feet caught up, and then Logan right there, the contact made as he reached for the ball. Smart job. Watch the feet get caught up right there, feet too close together. And watch. Again, J.J. Reddick, smart job of getting his body in the way, recognizing the contact is coming. Reddick with 19 points. And he will get a rest here beside Coach K. He's also a perfect 12 for 12 from the foul line, where he's a machine. 
Stevens gives it back up to Greenman. 6.25 left. And they did not get it across in time. A 10-second violation. That's the 14th turnover of the night for Princeton. And again, not to belabor the point, but every player on the Duke bench stood up and pointed to the shot clock before the whistle was blown. So Duke opens up a 53-37 lead. Reddick back in for Krzyzewski. Belchione fights for the rebound, but Princeton will have it. Oh, wait a minute. It's going to go to Duke here. Off the hands of Andre Logan as he came in. So a break for the Blue Devils. And right now, everything going Duke's way on this Wednesday night at Cameron Indoor. Well, they took kind of a body blow from Princeton beginning the second half. Princeton was able to start to run their stuff, execute, get some back doors, hit some mid-range shots. But then after Mike Krzyzewski called a timeout, Duke seemed to refocus their efforts defensively. A couple of steals, they rebounded the ball well, got in transition, and that gives a lot of guys confidence from the floor when you can get some easy baskets. Dockery with the miss. Yeah, Princeton had pulled it within eight points at one point here in the second half and had the Blue Devils on their heels for a bit. A little bit closer this time, and a two-pointer for Scott Greenman, the junior point guard. He has four points tonight. He came in averaging nine. That's the only way to bounce for you. Baseline. Got it. Princeton now just a half step too slow in protecting that baseline. You know, Duke moving the ball nicely. Inside-out game. And Princeton just not able to cover the shooters on the perimeter. Greenman launches a three, and that's been a big problem all night for the Tigers. They've been firing them up there, and they just haven't gotten them to go. One of them all night. They've made one out of 15 three-pointers. And from up here, you can see that they're thinking about it. They know they have the shot. They're a condition and program to take it. Kevin Williams tied up by Owens and a foul against the Tigers here with 436 to play more of a tackle and a foul and you know what that was between Sheldon Williams and Luke Owens I don't know what Lee Melchione was doing but this is not one of those games where you need to step in it is the tie up right there you know Owens obviously doesn't want any part of Sheldon Williams and trying to get involved but what's Lee Melchione doing and that's the part I'm not understanding Melchione tonight getting his first career start as a Blue Devil. He's a junior. Uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. In Sunday's win over Clemson, he hit a big three with about ten minutes left. Duke was trailing by one at the time. They went out in front on that bucket, a lead they would not relinquish. And they went on to win their ACC opener against Clemson, 62-54. to Well, he's a very valuable part of this Duke team, particularly, again, as they've been... Uh, really depleted on their bench with Randolph going down as well as Love. He steps in now and he's got to play a variety of roles. He's got to play in the front court and rebound and play some defense and still has to be able to look for a shot. He leads the team in three-point field goal percentage. Venable takes it up. Guarded by Reddick. 422 on the clock. A long three on the way by Owens. Not there for him. And Venable gets it back. Another chance here for the Tigers. A holding foul off the basketball with 4-10 to go. Well, tonight at 10 Eastern over on ESPN2, two teams that had surprising runs in last year's NCAA tournament hooked up in Music City. Ernest Shelton leading Alabama against Vanderbilt. It's college basketball tonight on ESPN2. Of course, the Tide went to the Elite Eight. Losing to UConn in the NCAA tournament. The Commodores knocked off Western Michigan and NC State before losing to UConn in the Sweet 16. And who can forget Alabama last year with a shocking upset of Stanford. You know, they're the type of team at, that's an athletic team that likes to run the floor, play solid defense. They're the type of team that if they put it together, they can go on and make a run in the tournament year after year. That's what Mike Gottfried looks to build his team to that point. Mark Godfrey, I should say. Now to Uncle Mike. 
He's running a little bit of clock. A foul and a hard foul. As Ewing was sent sprawling across the baseline. 3.30 left. Duke in command. Celebrating 100 years of Blue Devil basketball. Two doors. Four doors. Room for five. Room for nine. Off-road. OnStar. Nobody offers more truck models and SUV choices than Chevy. These trucks are the real deal. And they play for the same team. That's why I drive Chevy. The right truck. The official truck of an American revolution. Now, when you buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas from Domino's, you get them for just $5 each. That means pepperoni guy, mushroom guy, and sausage guy can each get their own pizza for just five bucks. Hey, who invited I'll pay you tomorrow guy? Domino's 555 deal is back. Buy three or more medium one-topping pizzas and they're all just five bucks each. Only from Domino's. Get the door, it's Domino's 555 deal. Yeah, having a little car trouble. I'm State Farm Agent Larry Bitterman, and this is a true story. I was there on vacation, so I called the local State Farm agent. We're not really sure how the car got into the lake. Yeah, the map was a disappointment. They called a local diver, and it turns out that's me too. I think he started my claim before it even dried off. And we settled it the next day. Where would I have been without him? Sunk. Any insurance company can promise you a good price, but nobody takes care of you like State Farm. We'd love to prove it to you. Call an agent today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Everyone wants it, basketball's got it. ESPN College Game Day starts January 22nd. Killed by Mountain Dew. Reese Davis with you in the studio. Pittsburgh, as we told you earlier, rallied from a 19-point first-half deficit, had Georgetown frozen and on the ropes when Carl Krauser moved without the ball. Carl, please make a V-cut. He did. Pittsburgh has caught them, and they have the lead now. Syracuse, no problem with St. John's. Boston College and West Virginia both entering the night unbeaten. BC up by three on UConn. West Virginia getting blown out. Hi, Reese. Thanks so much for the update here at Cameron Indoor. Duke has bolstered the lead to 56 to 39 against Princeton. With Ewing at the line. And JJ Reddick is on everybody's list of top three shooters in college basketball. 40% in his career from three-point range. But Daniel Ewing has actually been better than that in his career at Duke. Over 41%. And Duke's all-time best three-point man in terms of accuracy, believe it or not, Christian Leitner at 48.5%. Well, I believe it. Christian Leitner showed just an uncanny knack to step outside and get that shot without a hand in his face. Duke slowing things down here, coming up on three minutes to play. Now we're seeing the 100 years of Duke basketball the most memorable shot from Christian Leitner it wasn't necessarily a three but it was a backbreaker from game winner against Kentucky in the Eastern Regional and maybe the most that electrifying game. shot yeah in college basketball history it's been ranked as such I was lucky enough to be there sitting on the sidelines making the call not a bad seat Venable free and the miss Wallace fighting for the rebound, but he's double teamed. Gets it out to Schaefer. Wallace trying to get around Williams, and Williams fouls him with 223 to go. And when Wallace goes back and he takes a look at the tape of this game, he's going to realize that had he been this aggressive in the first half, this could be a different ball game. But he backed down in the first half, came out here with fire in his eyes in the second half, and is paying dividends, at least on the individual battle. 57 to 39 Duke with the lead 223 left and you mentioned Christian lady we were talking about his shot making prowess how about Len Elmore's all-time Duke team 
But you take a look at those guys, Jay Williams, Grant Hill, Christian Leighton, most people know about them. Johnny Dawkins, leading all-time scorer in Duke's history still. And he's the first major Mike Krzyzewski recruit that essentially set the tone for Duke basketball in the Krzyzewski era. Out of Washington, D.C., you take a look at his accomplishments, and he has been absolutely invaluable up there. Jay Williams defined the point guard position in the new century, in the year 2000, actually in 1999 also, because he defended, he scored, and he made plays. Grant Hill won just about every award imaginable for a player at both ends of the floor. Christian Leitner was a clutch player, you know, take no nonsense kind of guy. And the second leading scorer in Duke history, and Artie Heyman, as I mentioned, highest point per game average in Duke basketball history at 25.1, and he was the tough leader of that Duke decade in the 60s. We are happy to have Art with us earlier tonight, chatting with Len and myself here. Here's a guy who bleeds the Duke colors, doesn't he? Because you can't find a shirt like that in South Florida in that color, <laughs> but you can find it here in Durham, everywhere you look, and Art certainly is, he knows where to shop. He's in, he's in the wrong seats, though. He probably <laughs> belongs there with the Duke. You're absolutely right. <laughs> 209 left in this one. And don't forget, coming up, it's an NBA battle as the Suns take on the Rockets right here on ESPN. That is next on NBA Wednesday. And right now, if I had a vote for the most valuable player in the NBA, Steve Nash. He Steve has Steve. made an absolute 180-degree difference for the Phoenix Suns. His ability to make play, set up Amari Stoudemire. I'm sure Amari Stoudemire, if he wins it, will probably buy Nash a Rolls Royce. Oh, Not true. that I'm making a suggestion. <laughs> expensive, rather expensive suggestion. Valkyoni can't handle the pass underneath, and it goes over to the Princeton Tigers. For the loss tonight, Princeton will drop to 8-5, and five, and 1-16 and all-time against Duke, but a very rugged early schedule for the Tigers, and that is bound to pay off. They are the favorite to win the Ivy League again, which they did last year, and there are a lot of people who think they're going to go a perfect 14-0 and 0 in the Ivy League. Is that hook shot you like so much? Yeah, and I mean, and it works. It works. But, but going back to Princeton again, there are some things they have to work on, and one is they've got to get better three-point shooting accuracy because that's the complement to the back door. When teams recognize that they're not hitting from beyond the arc, they're not going to be so willing to deny and overplay and allow them to go back door. They're going to test their ability to shoot the three, which Duke kind of did early in the game. They weren't able to do it, and Duke felt more comfortable overplaying those wings and really broke this game open. The three-point shot has been a big part of their attack. They're averaging seven three-point baskets a game tonight. Princeton just one out of 17 beyond that arc. But again, I like what Joe Scott is doing, what he's trying to build. He really doesn't have an awful lot of his recruits out here on the floor. He's the kind of guy that's going to get some quality players to go along with the guys recruited by John Thompson III, who is now in Georgetown. Reddick with 19 points, not fouled on that play. 35 seconds to go. And the first-year head coach of the Princeton Tigers is on his way to suffering a loss at the hands of the Blue Devils. And a very special season for Duke as they celebrate their 100th year of college basketball and tremendous success. Of course, for Mike Krzyzewski as well, this is his 25th season at the helm. And Patrick Johnson gets knocked to the floor. 19 seconds left. Savage with the dunk. <laughs> a savage dunk at that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Marcus Nelson looked as though he was going to catch up to him and make the block. 57-46. And a whistle with 9.9 .9 seconds left. Duke will improve to 10-0 for the fourth time in the last five years. Now, the early schedule for the Blue Devils has not been all that challenging. The Blue Devils' best win to date, a seven-point victory over then number 11 Michigan State. That was back on November 30th. But on their way to remaining undefeated, Illinois is at 14-0. BC trying to stay that way. A tough contest tonight at UConn. Texas A&M at Kansas. These games tonight. So six teams in action tonight unbeaten at Division I. And West Virginia looks right now as though they're going down at Villanova. But to go back to Duke very quickly, again, this is about survive game by game with the depletion that they have based on the illness and the injuries. 
They're just going to have to find a way to win. Mike Krzyzewski's got to be proud. Against Clemson, they played a particular style, able to win the ball game. Against Princeton, they were able to adapt to Princeton's style of play and to be able to really impose their will and win this game. So it's a game-by-game -game deal for Duke. They're more than capable of getting it done. Well, game by game, they keep on winning. And we're going to be checking in with Boston College and UConn going to that game in just a moment. There's your final score. Duke a perfect 10-0 on the season as they knock off the Princeton Tigers by a final of 59-46. to For Len Elmore, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks so much for being with us tonight from Duke. And right now, we toss it to Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave, so Duke takes care of business by beating Princeton 59-46. to We'll get you to the NBA at the top of the hour. The Suns and the Rockets getting set to square off. Stuart Scott, Tim Legler, Stephen A. Smith arriving in the studio. They'll take you through your NBA night. Get you up to date on a couple of college scores right now as so we start to crank up conference play. Boston College and UConn. Boston College, one of the six remaining undefeated teams in college basketball. The Eagles in Hartford tied at 70, under a minute to go. Let's go out there now. Bob Picosi and Donnie Marshall have the call. He will try to get the ball into the hands of Smith at the other end, whether Anderson makes this free throw or not. So Anderson misses, so we're all even with 54 seconds to go. Hey, that third free throw is tough, Bob. I mean, it's and, and a, a timeout called there to kind of ice the shooter a little bit, which it did. Boone is on Smith. Dudley guarded by Gay. Those are the two key matchups. They clear the side for Smith. He spins on Boone up and under, draws the foul. mentioned earlier that the, the way you went on the road is making your free throws Boston College is also rebounding very well as you see Craig Smith going to the middle faking to the baseline stepping through and might have got fouled a couple times in there on that one play but you got to make foul shots on the road to win Smith 10th in the Big East in free throw shooting at 75 percent this is his first attempt of the night foul on Boone was his second the BC regaining the lead with 35 seconds to go. There is a four tenths of a second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Two point BC lead. Let's see if UConn will call time. Looks like they will. With 29.7 seconds left. And what do you think Jim Calhoun will diagram here in the huddle, Donnie? What are his options? Well, you know, you, you have plenty of time, and, and Coach Calhoun being a de defensive coach, he's going to tell his guys, take the best shot we can get in the paint. I don't think they're going to jack up a three-pointer because you don't need it. Rashad Anderson has hit a couple, but he's, he's really not the he's not playing like himself tonight. And you got those, those bodies inside. They can go after the... You know, second shot, second uh, shot for rebounds, and you score here, you tie the game, you go down, you always hear it. Defense wins games, and I think they're going to go for it. They're going to pound it inside. It's, put UConn some pressure on that defense, that Boston College defense in the post. Sorry, Bob. I'm sorry, Donnie. UConn has one full timeout left. BC with a full and a 30. So if the Huskies struggle on the inbound, they do have the option of calling another timeout. Now, as far as fouls are concerned, BC already over the limit, so any foul will result in UConn going to the line. The next foul on UConn would send BC to the line. So it's Boone, Gay, Williams, Villanueva, and Anderson for the Huskies. Smith, Watson, Dornicamp, Dudley, and Hinnant for BC. Donnie Gray and Tim Higgins having a discussion. 29.7 seconds left. Now Curtis Shaw gets involved. The shot clock says 30 seconds remaining, so that can't be. Gay will throw the inbound. Smith is guarding Boone down low, or guarding Villanueva, rather. And it looks like Boone will be defended by Dornikan. There's the timeout situation, and the possession arrow pointing toward UConn.
And now Donnie Gray explaining things to Al Skinner. Well, there's no tenth, as you see, on the shot clock compared to the game clock. So that's why you see 29.7 on the shot clock, on the game clock, and 30. If there was a tenth, then you would see that 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 cl clock being four tenths off, like you spoke of so earlier. So in reality, the shot clock's really off. Exactly. Gay to inbound to Williams. Whose number will UConn call? Dornicamp guarding Boone, who sets the screen. Pass inside, stolen by the Eagles, and UConn will be forced to foul with 21.7 seconds left. Tough play there, and that's that. That, needless to say, really kills you. You know UConn wants to go inside, so Boston College does a great job of really packing it in. You see Hennett getting a, a hand on it. You know they're going inside. Dudley picks it up. He gets fouled there. Probably should have used a little bit more clock, had a little bit more patience, but come down, now you got a chance to, to get it back after the free throws here by, by Dudley. Dudley, three of four for nine tonight. Seventh foul on UConn, so it's one and one. It's the first one. Remember, Anderson had a chance to tie when he was three free throws with 56 seconds. Made the first. They had a chance to add rather. Made the first two to third. And was fouled. And now Dudley has a chance to do the same and does. So BC hitting all four free throws in the last 14 seconds, and it has resulted in a four-point lead, and this changes the strategy considerably. And the guy we talked about earlier who stepped up while Craig Smith was on the bench was Jared Dudley, and he's continuing to do it. He's five or six from the foul line. He's got 17 points and knocking down two of the, the biggest fouls. All right, so Boston College trying to stay unbeaten, trying to go to 12-0 and 0 on the road against UConn. If you're just joining us here and looking for the Suns and the Rockets, we're going to get you out to the NBA game in just a little bit. A little bonus coverage right now. Boston College, one of six teams remaining in America unbeaten. West Virginia, another of them going on the road in the Big East tonight. They are getting clobbered right now by Villanova. But Boston College just figured to be the trap game at UConn against the reigning national champions. But it appears right now that Boston College has a leg up. 21.7 to go. Let's go back to Hartford. Checking our game track. Another double-double for Boone. And Smith, despite the foul trouble, still has managed to score 16. Here's UConn, who needs two scores. Anderson for three. No good. Rebound Hennett. And he is immediately fouled. And if Hennett can knock down these...